What's up boys? Today we're going to be taking a look at what is the most accurate rendering of the Mustang S650. This is probably almost exactly what we're going to get. Let's do work. Yes, I'm wearing glasses again because I want to spare you guys from this. Ah! I have a bacterial infection in my eye. So anyway, we're going to be talking about the S650, why I love it, why I hate it. Firstly, if you like Mustangs, motorcycles, and Mantech, please hit that subscribe. If you like this video, please hit that like button and please leave a comment. It really helps the channel. Y'all are awesome. Formalities out of the way. I'm commenting on a car and driver article here. We'll take a look at it together on the new S650. And I think they're spot on with their analysis and illustrations here. Car and driver also is a reputable source of information. This seems to match up precisely to the test mule that we've been seeing sans the black and white polka dots. And I think they're pretty accurate that this is almost exactly what we're going to get. So we're going to be candid, fair, and balanced here as always. Firstly, Car and Driver suggested we may have a release date of April 17th, 2023, the day the original Mustang bowed at the 1964 New York World's Fair. And I think that makes a lot of sense. So we could be seeing this Mustang as of April 17th. I think we have to accept that this is exactly what we're going to be getting right here. We're not getting something revolutionary like this or like this or like this, like I'd hoped, but we're also not straying too far away from the Mustang formula either, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because the current S650 is the hottest car on the planet in my humble opinion. So even if it's got slightly similar performance and looks, I'm hoping it's gonna be awesome. Let's talk about what I don't like first, the elephant in the room, those headlights. I don't like expanding those gorgeous slits from the S650 across the headlights, making the bulbs all square looking like that. I think that's a design faux pas, if you will. And no, I don't know what a faux pot is and you better not either don't make me give you the eye anyway i don't like those three little square headlights i just it's not beautiful maybe it'll grow on me when i see it in person but otherwise aftermarket prepare to mobilize i don't like this hood slit right here now this is just a render, but if it looks anything like this, it's not aggressive enough for me. I want more muscle up front and a big aggressive mouth on that hood to devour the air to feed that V8 beast that I'm hoping is under this hood. I'd like a more aggressive hood. Aftermarket, take note, you've got work to do. Anyway, but that's what I love about Mustangs. The aftermarket is so awesome, arguably better than any other car's aftermarket. So we can tweak this Mustang to overcome Ford's injustices of design. I'm not saying I hate this front end, I'm not. I've seen bad front ends. <laughs> By the way, I did see another one of these BMWs today, and as always, I stared at it as it drove by, and it grew on me again. An incremental tenth of a percentage point, but it's growing on me, slowly. But you don't choose a girlfriend or a wife to slowly grow on you. You want love at first sight. And I think we're close to that here on the S650, as rendered by Car and Driver. I like how they've gone more aggressive with the front end here. I like that I can actually see some GT500 DNA here. Oh, you don't know what DNA stands for. <sighs> Okay, in layman's terms, layman's terms, that means I'm going to explain it to you so you understand it. DNA means deox de de detoxified naturally aspirated acid. Duh. Anyway, I get a strong GT500 vibe here, and that's a really good thing, as I consider the GT500, in my humble opinion, to be the best looking car of all time, or at least one of the best looking cars of all time. If we take these two lines right here out, or murder them out, like I totally plan to do with this car, God willing, mine will be a completely murdered out Mustang. It would look even more aggressive, especially if the car were black. Maybe some slight red accents. Anyway, I get ahead of myself. It looks a lot like the GT500. Even maybe throw a dark pony logo in there, and again, on a black car, that would look hot. I love the large air intakes. What kind of a beast are we gonna have here if we need a big old ice cream scoop on that hood and air intakes like this? I'm hopeful for this V8. Really looking forward to see it and to hear it and drive it. Some commenters told me that they've heard a manual is confirmed. Awesome for us purists. However, though my last four cars were manuals, that's a 2013 Honda CRZ. What? I was going through a phase. That was a cool car. A 2017 STI Limited, a 2018 Mustang GT Premium, and a 2018 GT350. All those cars were manuals, but if Ford comes out with some kind of a new ultra-fast performance 10R100 or whatever, I may consider that. Gotta mix it up for the channel. As we all know, we're very likely gonna have a hybrid option. Look at these gas prices here in New York. Over $7 per gallon for premium. $7! So I think we can expect some better gas mileage and a hybrid setup to boost that gas mileage. I think that's a given. So either way, if this does come out in April 2023, we're going to have to pay a lot for gas, but only until 2024, when Donald Trump, God willing, comes back to fix this disaster that has befallen our beloved country. Uh -uh. 
If that triggered you, please calmly leave facts in the comments below on how the current administration has bettered our lives. I kid, I kid, my leftist friends. <laughs> That's an oxymoron. I'm just kidding. But seriously, the country is burning down around us. Anyway, we know the interior of this car will have a major makeover. I'm not going to go into that in depth here because Xander 13 has already done an in-depth analysis on the interior. Great guy, great channel, by the way. Check it out, Xander 13. But we can expect an overhaul of the interior. Hopefully it's high quality. Hey, Ford, get rid of those vinyl back seats that came with my 401A. Leather or some kind of fake synthetic like you put in our Mach-E. All right, reading a little from this Car and Driver article here, it's no secret that the Camaro's Alpha platform outhandles the Mustang's current S550 chassis. Ford hopes to correct that with the seventh generation car, dubbed the S650. Under the hood, expect a turbocharged 2.3 liter inline four to produce around 320 horsepower. Wimpy, 320 horsepower. My lawnmower has more horsepower than that. And we wouldn't be surprised to see a hybrid variant join the herd. If the hybrid keeps the 450 plus horsepower V8s coming, we're more than happy. If the hair raising 760 horsepower supercharged 5.2 liter V8 from the GT500 survives, we'll be thrilled. A six speed manual and 10 speed automatic are likely to return. Like the current generation Mustang, the new S650 should have an eight year life cycle and expect to pack on additional performance variants year after year. Those faster ponies might come fast though, as 2026 brings more stringent corporate average miles per gallon requirements. Good point about 2026. By then I hope they'll have a new GT350, GT500, and my Mustang GT modded out with the best performance package available. It's all going downhill after that, and it's probably going to be the Mustang that I end up keeping for Evs. Now seriously, an all-electric country isn't happening anytime soon, as you'll see in my next video, because the country can't handle it, and it's too inconvenient. But it is coming. After this segment, I'll give you a little preview of that video here with my Mustang Mach-E, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. So in summary, I am really liking this car so far. A couple of little tweaks here and there. Like I said, remove these lines here, make that front scoop a little bit more aggressive, paint the car black, and I think you have a pretty sexy car here. It's definitely more aggressive than the front end of the current S550, and I like this direction, especially once you put some performance packages on with that more aggressive front splitter and putting a spoiler on the back. I think this has the potential to be a very good looking Mustang. If I know Ford, it's going to perform better, it's going to be faster, more powerful, and given the industry, it's probably going to have a little bit better gas mileage. I did get 16 miles per gallon in my GT350, but I was driving hard. I'm expecting maybe 30 out of this one, but I will also be driving hard, so probably in the low 20s. I do really want to see this in black and maybe put some red over the top stripes on together with a performance package and rear spoiler, I think this is going to look hot. I'm actually hoping it looks like this, unless they do tweak those headlights a little bit. So picture this car, murdered out, red, classy, over the top racing stripes, blacked out emblems, red dot between the 5 and the .0. I am starting to salivate over this. So yeah, in summary, I'm, ex I'm excited for this. I think it's looking good. With a couple of tweaks here and there from the aftermarket, I think it'll look great. Now I'm just waiting on those performance numbers, boys. Ford better be over 500 horsepower and a lot more torque than last time. But in the meantime, let me know what you think of the new S650's design. Will you buy one? Why or why not? Let's discuss in the comments below. And until then, always remember the motto, always be kinder than necessary. And I'll see you in the next one. Uh, excuse me, I burped. It happens. Get over it. I love you guys.